All right, good afternoon. Uh, this is definitely more of a video that lends itself towards AP Seminar and any of you AP Lang kids that happen to stumble across it. That's right, I'm working on a Saturday. I, I, I don't know, against my better judgment, I've decided to uh, make this uh, video about implications. Uh, implications are really tough to explain to kids. Uh, it's somewhat ironic that it's tough to explain what implication means. So the definition of an implication is the conclusion that can be drawn from something although it is not explicitly stated. So that's the, that's the operative word here. In your individual written argument, one of the things you have to do well on the rubric is you have to explain the implications of your conclusion resolution or your policy or proposal. In other words, if you're right, what does that mean for the people involved? So I stumbled across this on the uh, the FWA Facebook page. Usually there's just a bunch of teachers ranting and raving. Uh, although there's good stuff there, I shouldn't throw my colleagues under the bus, but I found this uh, post from uh, a fairly reputable source, a public education attorney. So this short, and I'm also, what I'm also going to share this, uh, I'm also going to share this document uh, via email uh, or remind, I'm, I'm going to make it available to you uh, so you can go through it and see what we're talking about here. So this short Facebook post explores the implications of implementing online learning during the current nearly nationwide school shutdown due to COVID-19. As you read this post, note where the author establishes her credibility, in other words, why, sh why should we believe her, and explores the implications uh, of implementing online learning for the various perspectives. So perspectives equal people. What will online learning mean for the stakeholders identified in this piece? So when we're talking about stakeholders in education, we're talking about teachers, students, admin, parents, right? Oh, my big fat head's in the way. I'm going to move my big fat head out of the way. We're going to move my big fat head up here for now. All right, so... Uh, we're talking about all of these people. How will online learning affect all of these people? And within students, you don't just have students. There are students who have access. Who have access. Students that don't. Students without. And then you also have SPED students, special education students. How do you... How do you, how do you cap, capture SPED students with online learning? And then the other thing to identify within students is the various subjects. Some subjects lend themselves to online learning, such as AP Seminar or AP Lang or AP Lit. Uh, PE, how do you do online learning with PE? How do you do online learning with drama? How do you do online learning with art or pottery or auto or any number of subjects? So anyway, I'm, I'm bird walking. So after reading this post, look at your own research question and argument. Who are the stakeholders in your argument and how might your solution, conclusion, or resolution affect those people? So another thing you might consider about your, about, uh, about your research question and whether somebody looks at this video in the next couple of days or looks at this video a year from now is, how how do current events how do current events um, affect your question? So, for example, right now an AP seminar as of the taping of this taping. That's quaint. As of the recording of this video, uh, the current stimulus materials were all about happiness and meaning. Happiness and meaning in life. So how, how might a nearly nationwide shutdown of basically everything in the United States, how might that affect 
one's happiness, well-being, or meaning in their lives. That the implications of that are way too big to contemplate here in this in this video, but it's worth exploring. It's worth exploring uh, happiness, the the current happiness, meaning, and well-being. How feeding that through the lens of current events? That's a great way to get implications. So uh, so this is another way we find implications. All right, so let's take a look at this post. All right, so here we go. Here we go. Let's move my, you know, maybe I need to make my big fat head smaller. That's, that could be the issue. We're gonna, gonna shrink me down. Yeah, that's a little more friendly. We don't need my big fat head there. All right, so hi, your friendly public school attorney here is to explain why setting up online learning isn't the easiest thing in the world, since I am seeing more comments and posts complaining that educators are not doing enough or moving fast enough. So educators, that's a stakeholder. How does, how does she establish her credibility? Right here, public school attorney. I looked her up. She's, she's mostly legit, so it's not total garbage. Uh, she's not garbage tier. And so... The proposal is setting up online learning. Why aren't we setting up online learning? And she's going to explore, she's going to explore implications. And she does a nice job of organizing her post. A cup of coffee here. You really shouldn't do that on video, but but I'm going to, or else it's going to get cold. So she uses a, a rhetorical strategy called enumerado. That's enumerado. She numbers her points. Now you don't actually have to number your points in a in a in an argument, but organizing them by uh, importance uh, is perhaps a, a great way to go to structure your own argument. So she starts off with special special education concerns. That's another stakeholder. that must be addressed. We cannot provide general education students with online learning and not provide it to special education students. That would be discriminatory, so that's an implication. And some accommodations are difficult to provide online. That's another implication. Plus, we will need to provide related services speech, therapy, occupational and physical therapy, etc., which raises additional legal and practical concerns. So we've got implication all over the place. All right, so why haven't we set up online learning? More online learning, let's hand out Chromebooks to everybody. So right, right here, she's exploring what that would mean for this particular population. And that would be SPED students how do you meet all their accommodations? Speech therapy, um, occupational and phys physical therapy. How do you do physical therapy over Zoom? Uh, Zoom's great, but it's not, you can't be in people's houses doing this stuff. Um, lawyers and staff are working around the clock to figure out how to do this, but it is not simple. This situation is unprecedented, and we are trying to figure it out as quickly as we can. To be clear, these concerns do not mean that educators are just throwing up their hands. Who are, oh, educators, stakeholders. Uh, we will, uh, uh, we can provide special education, and we will. Special education is only one of many concerns that must be addressed. So here she's a little weak. She doesn't, she doesn't go into detail about how they're going to do it. She just says they will do it. Uh, that's definitely a weakness in this gal's argument. Remember, no... No source is perfect. No source is perfect. And here's a weakness. She doesn't really, she doesn't really tell you how, how we're going to get there. But she does do a nice job of going through and explaining what, on, what is online learning going to mean for these folks. This is what it's going to mean. These are the implications of online learning for this group of SPED students. All right, second, many students and teachers do not have adequate technology. So now we've got stakeholders. Adequate technology. So now we've got another implication. And we've got stakeholder. You know, we're just going to, we're going to abbreviate. 
we're just going to go SH, SH. Stakeholders, all right? Uh, even if families have a computer, they may not have one for every child in the house. Now, uh, you can pause the video right here and see if you can identify the rhetorical move or the thought move that this writer just made. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you understand what she just did here. What did she just do? If you said concession and refutation, you would be correct. All right, so the concession is, okay, even if families have a computer, they may not have one for every child in the house. That's the refutation. Recognizing, yes, computers are fairly widespread, but there may not be a device for everybody in the house. She's also does another thing. We can potentially provide computers if we can find money in the budget. But, and then she brings up another refutation. What about internet connections? So this is another implication. We're going to call that an imp. That's another imp. Not everyone has internet at home. That's another imp. So the implications kind of get folded in with the, with the concessions and refutations. Remember, a concession is, yes, that may be true. However, while you do have a point, however, so the implications are not everyone has internet at home. Even if they do, implication, it may not be high speed. We have multiple kids doing online learning. Dial-up, does that even exist anymore? Isn't going to handle that. Does anybody have dial-up anymore? I remember in 2004, I had net zero for 10 bucks a month. And you could, you could, you could actually hear the phone dialing. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop, 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 to get on. And you can hear that as as late as 2004. Wait, that wasn't that was 16 years ago. That wasn't that late. Uh, isn't going to handle that again. School districts and vendors are working on solutions, but no one wants to provide online learning learning only to students rich enough to afford technology. So here she addresses. Uh, you know, uh, you know, God, what do we, what's the politically correct way to put it? Well, people with money, people who can afford versus people who can't. Some of you may not even be able to address this content. You might not be able to get on YouTube. Uh, or maybe you're, you're just, you're just, you can't even right now and you're just, you're in full, uh, you're in full, I'm just, I'm just going to hide right now. I don't, I, Mr. Dykus, go away, quit emailing me, quit posting videos. I don't want to watch them. Maybe you're in, maybe that's you right now, but uh, hey, bir birds got to fly, fish got to swim, I got to teach. So, all right, anyway, uh, I'm, you know, this video's for me. Then I can feel like I got something done today. All right, so anyway, um, really a uh, nice solid job of going through and exploring what does online learning mean through the lens of technology? What does that mean for the stakeholders through the lens of technology? There are varying levels of access to the internet depending on your budget. So ge gear isn't the only thing we need to worry about. In fact, it's the, it's the easiest thing to solve. You just go to that Bill Gates fella and say, give all these kids a computer. Boom, he does it. Uh, you go to that Jeff Bezos fellow, ship a ship a ship a laptop to every kid in America. Boom, done. What about internet? <laughs> That's the next problem. All right, so now we're going to get down to another implication. If we require teachers to work, that's a stakeholder. Many of them have children at home themselves and may need to take family medical leave to care for their own children. This thing is full of implications of what online learning is going to mean for these stakeholders. In addition, uh, she's doing a really good job of conceding and refuting. All right. Uh, even if they don't, they may struggle just like we are to work and care for their children. So we might struggle to staff online classrooms. If employees get sick or otherwise need to be out, we would need to call on subs. That's something, that's something no one's even thought of. What if, what if I'm what if I set up my online classroom but I'm sick that day? Do I do I do I show up on Zoom? <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't have kids. Hold on, hold on. I mean, 
<laughs> yes, I will wash my hands afterwards. Uh, this is something we haven't even thought of. So uh, this is definitely an implication. Uh, we would also need to have, subs would also need to have adequate technology and be trained on it. So man, we are going down a rabbit hole. We, we are, there's a, there's the, there's the whole, here's the, there's my bunny. We are going down a rabbit hole and where it goes, we know not. All right, now. We're getting so we've looked now we've looked at it through the we've looked at it through the lens of technology. Now we're going to come on down to materials, materials and lesson plans. Here's where's my big fat head. I'm gonna move my big fat head. No. I'm gonna move my big fat head. All right, there we go. Materials and lesson plans need to be adapted for online learning. That takes time. It's an implication. All right, and we also have to be cautious about how we deliver material due to copyright concerns. Really, someone's going to sue right now with everything going on? Somebody's really going to sue? Wow. Okay, but that's, that's an implication nonetheless. You can't just throw anything you want online. Uh, we also have to take into account different learning styles and stages of development. Younger children will struggle to focus on, on online classes. So we've got implication, implication, uh, implication. I'm picturing my own children, my nine-year-old, my 10-year-old doing Zoom. Where are they going? You know, I just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it working. All right, so, uh, but we're almost done. This is just a small sampling of what school districts are looking at. So here, you can pause the video at this point and you see if you can identify exactly what this lady just did here. If you said it was some kind of a qualifier or that she limited her claim, you would be correct. It doesn't even begin to address the massive amount of work that has to be done to ensure that children could continue to receive school nutrition, something that many children rely on. So uh, this speaks to what is the role of public school? Is it just to deliver education? It isn't. Uh, please give it, it says, please give educators some grace convert. They aren't just in this business for the sweet salary. They are in it for your kids. Yeah, we are. That's why I'm making this video. I mean, part of, part of it's for my own sanity, I'll admit it, but a lot of it is for you. All right, now, last but not least, be careful what you wish for. All right, so this is, this is where she hits you. Remember, you save the best for last in an argument. I'm sorry, I'm going to have some more coffee. It's a big no-no. Big no-no in making a video, but here's to you. Hope this finds all of you well. All right. Last but not least, be careful what you wish for, especially if you have young kids. Online learning might require a lot of parent participation. All right, so we've got a stakeholder. And we've got an implication. The implication, we implement online learning. What does that mean to parents? It means they can't just set it and forget it. They can't just plop their kids in front of it and walk away. Like Minecraft, it doesn't work that way. Kids often need redirection to focus on coursework. That could be you, parents. That could be you. Kids may need help figuring out the technology. Congratulations. You are now parent, WFH employee, and IT professional. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I assume it's some kind of some kind of teacher or some kind of school district employee. But now IT professional. Now I'm thinking about my mother, my 73 year old mother, and I, I had to hook everything up for her. I have to. She calls me all the time to hook things up for. Her. Think about your parents. 
how how technically adept are they? Some parents are very technically adept. Uh, I'm not useless. I'm okay. I mean, I've figured out how to do this, but I've not figured out how to edit or do anything particularly sophisticated, nor have I figured out Canvas, which... Do I rip on Canvas on a district video? I do. I do. Canvas is really confusing to me. Dear God, I hope they don't make me use it. It's very confusing to me. Some, some teachers are having a fine time with it. As with all educational technology, your mileage may vary, but uh, I'm, I'm having a tough time. All right, so these are implications. Th these are big-time implications. Uh, so just saying this won't be a set-it-and-forget-it situation for most kids. Most kids thinking about, because you've got, you've got grade school, just think about this. Grade school, these, these are the implications. These are the unstated implications. Grade school, middle school, and high school. So the high schoolers, they're going to be okay for most core subjects. History, math, English, biology, core subjects, they're going to be kind of all right. They won't be the best, but it's, it's doable. Their electives... That's going to that's gonna depend on the teacher's creativity and ability, as well as student engagement. And some electives are just, it's just not going to happen. Middle schoolers, it's going to be a mixed bag. Because middle schoolers developmentally, those, those seventh graders are still kind of little kids, but not really. Those eighth graders are starting to kind of get it together. Hormones are kicking in. It's, it's going to be a mixed bag. So here, it's going to be okay. Here it's it's gonna be it's gonna be ish. It's gonna be kinda ish. Grade school. That's the Wild West. We don't even know what this is gonna look like for a room full of kindergartners. I mean what is how do you zoom with thirty kindergartners? Is every parent gonna set their kid down in front of the camera and say, Okay, there's your teacher? I don't think so. So anyway. Uh, we've, we've reached the end of, of this article, which I will share. I, I'll email it to you guys. Hopefully you guys will get it. I, I'm, I'm not trying to make your life hard. I'm trying to offer some help, some, something concrete to work on, uh, which for a lot of you, I realize this may not be, this may not be what you need to be doing right now. And if it's not, I'm cool with that. I am okay with that. I am okay if this is not what you need to be working on. All right, so, so now, now that we've walked all the way through it, um, think about your own research question and look at your stakeholders and think about how your solution might impact those people. So, for example, if you're dealing with, if you want to talk about divorce, how does divorce affect the happiness and well-being of children? Well, then you can look at that by age group. Younger children, middle, middle um, younger, very young children, kind of in the middle children, so like 10 to 10 to 12, preteens, and then teenagers. It's going to be different for each group. Be thinking about what it's going to do to each group. What will it do to the parents? What will happen if the parents remarry? So there's all kinds of ways you can begin to ask questions about uh, what will happen. Again, what you're doing there is you're you're going down the rabbit hole. You're going down the rabbit hole. My big fat head's in the way. You can't see my rabbit hole. So go down. When we're doing research, it's okay. You can go down. A little happy little tree. We won't tell anybody about that tree. A little happy tree. And we've got, a, got the little rabbit. Hop down the rabbit hole and see what happens. That's, that's what I'm encouraging you to do here with implications. Implications are the rabbit hole. What happens? What happens if we do this? Uh, the other thing that's not even been addressed, or it's being addressed, but I'm not seeing a lot, is bandwidth. Is, is there room on the internet for all of us? I mean, my internet connection so far, knock on wood, is okay, but what about you? I don't know. We don't know. All right, so I hope you found, I hope you somebody finds this video useful. 
Maybe my, my jokes made you smile. I say that in just about every video. Um, but I, I really do hope this finds you well, and I hope it was useful to you, or I, I hope it might be useful to future, future groups. Uh, this doesn't necessarily replace the full Dicus experience of being in class, give and take, and, uh, but, you know, maybe it gives you a little of that thing you're craving. If nothing else, if you've got a parent that's on you, you've got to do at least two hours of schoolwork a day. You can get your phone out and you can watch one of my videos. Look, I'm watching Mr. Dicus, and then look, look, how, look how authoritative this all looks. You know, there are worse things to do than watch my videos. Uh, so just saying, just saying. A little, a little shading. You know, let's see what's in this little burrow. All right, now, now, I, now I'm beginning to, to bird walk. Uh, but uh, I think I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna call it a day on this video, and uh, I hope again it fi you find it useful. And we're gonna stop.